Okay, guys, I'm going to show you guys how to start taking your alphabet letters and individually collaging them onto one page in Photoshop. So here I have my Photoshop open. Okay, first I'm going to start with a new file. So you can either do file new or you can click here and do new file. Now I have presets, you guys might not. So I'm going to show you how to set your page file size. So you can have it either portrait or landscape. So if I want it landscape, I'm going to do 20 inches. Make sure you set it to inches. Set it to inches first, because if you set it to pixels and then set your 20 by 16, it'll, it'll like, if, when you go to set it to inches, it erases your 20 by 16. So set it to inches first, and then make your width 20 by 16. But if you want it portrait, you could just hit this and it'll switch it. So de you decide which way you want your page orientation to be, if you want it to be landscape or portrait. I'm going to do landscape. Also, make sure your resolution is set to 300. I do this all the time, so mine automatically sets it this way, but yours might look different. RGB color is fine. 8-bit is fine. You can change the color of your background. You can leave it white now, or you can make it black, or you can choose a background color. If you leave it white, you can always change it later. So you might as well just leave it white or do black, and then you can always change it later. And then hit create. The reason I do 16 by 20 is because that's the biggest I ever print. So I'm going to create. Now I got my page. It always shows my grid lines on here. So I'm going to do view extras. But you probably are going to want the grid line, but I'm going to show you guys how to put it back on later. So once I have my page, this is the page that I'm going to open up each of my letters, copy and paste onto this page. So I'm going to do file, open, and I'm going to start opening my letters. I'm going to go to digital photo. I'm going to go to period seven and just choose somebody's letters. Here we go. All right. So this one looks like it's probably like an I. Okay. Let's say it's the first letter. Let's say it's an A. Or it doesn't really matter because I can move them later. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to select the part of this that I want to be on the page. Now, he might want to crop this first before selecting it. Or you could just select the part of the picture that you want. So I could just use my rectangle marquee here which is over here in my toolbar, the second one down. And I could just select like this part. And I could copy and paste it. My feather set at 60. I want my feather set at zero. Okay. Or I could crop my picture first, how I want it. And then crop it and then just do select all. Either way is fine. And I'm going to do edit, copy, or command C. Then I'm going to go, see, each time you open up a picture, you have a new tab up here. So then I'm going to go back to my untitled, and I'm going to do edit, paste. Now that's really big. I'm not going to be able to fit 26 pictures on this page if this is that big, right? So I'm going to do edit, transform, scale, and I'm going to pull it smaller. Now, this I, because it's an I, it's probably going to be down here somewhere, but I'm going to pretend it's my A right now. And I'm going to put it up in the corner here. And once I have it kind of the size I want, I'm going to hit either the check mark up here to the right, or I'm going to hit the arrow here, and I'm going to do that. Notice every time I paste, I get another layer here. So if I want to go do something to one of them, I have to go to that layer. So let's say I'm done with that one. I'm going to X out of that. I am not going to save. And bless you. Now I'm going to open my next one. Now I'm pretending that's an A, even though it's an I, because I can't tell what each of his letters are. All right. I'm going to open. I think that's probably a C. So now I'm going to open up this one. And now I'm going to copy this one part that I want using my marquee and I'm going to do edit copy 
I'm going to go over here and I'm going to do edit, paste. Again, super big. Now, edit, transform, scale. And I'm going to pull it down. Now, here's the trick. This is where you have to start deciding like how you want your pictures to lay. If you want them to be even, then I got to keep pulling this to where it meets up with here. And this is where I'm going to put my grid on so I can make sure that they are even together. So I'm going to do view and I'm going to do extras and I got my grid. So I can make sure like if I want, I can go back to my eye layer here, go back to layer one and I could take my eye layer, whoops, okay. I could take my um, arrow, take my eye layer and I can maybe start here in the corner and that way I can go to this one here and I can kind of line it up. And now I see that they're perfectly lined up here, but here they're a little off. So I could take this second one, transform, scale, and I could scale it down a smidge so that it meets up with the other one. Now you don't have to do it that way. So I could do, let's say this is A, B, C, D, E, and then the next one put down here, or you could fit it like a Tetris puzzle, which might be a little harder. But let's say I open up a new one. I'm just taking random ones. Obviously you're gonna want some in letter order, but I'm just taking random ones for this purpose of demonstrating. So this one I'm going to do select all, copy it, and I'm going to go over here, edit, paste, edit, transform, scale. And maybe that one goes there. Now see, I left one line in between here, so I'm going to want to leave another line in between here. And do it like that. Now let's say, I don't want to do it that way. Let's say my C here, I want bigger. And let's say for some reason, I want this one to fit in there. I can do edit, transform, rotate. And I can rotate this. I can line it up here with that one. And then I can do edit, transform. Mm. I'm gonna let me scale it. And I can scale it down smaller to fit like that. So it's up to you how you wanna do it. As long as you have similar spacing in between them, it's totally fine. Now, if I want to go back later and I, let's say I want to make my background black, I can go to my background layer here in my layer palette over here, which should be open so you can see. And then I would go down here to my uh, colors in my toolbar and I'm going to switch the black up front. I could choose whatever color I want. I could choose a red color. I could choose green. I could choose blue. It doesn't really matter, but I'm going to make it black. And then I would take my paint bucket which is under here. So any of these tools that have a little um, triangle next to them, it means that there's other tools underneath if you hold it down. So if you can't find something, hold down your tools and you'll see there's other things under them. Like if your crop tool is missing, if you hold this, you can go under and find your crop tool. So I'm gonna go under here and I happen to know where they all are because I've been doing this, but you'll get used to knowing where they are. I'm gonna want paint bucket tool. And so now it's black, but I can change it to whatever color I want later. So I suggest you start with white, lay it all out, and then you can kind of experiment later. Now, one other thing I want to show you, I'm going to undo that because I actually like the white better. <clears throat> let's say, let's say I have this one here. Edit, transform, scale. And let's say this one is like that big and I, do, I can't do anything to like change it. Let's say I want to cut the bottom of this one to meet this one. Or let's say I want to cut the bottom of this one to meet this one. What I can do is I can take my square marquee and I can go to the layer that I'm on 
and I can kind of line up this like crosshair with the picture I want it to line up with and then select the other part of the picture that I want to delete that wasn't quite lined up right so and then I can make sure I'm on the layer and delete it so that way now that one lines up with this one it doesn't really it's a little off but and now let's say I want this one, let's say I want this one to line up with this one, but I got too much at the top. I could do the same thing. I line up the crosshair with this one, copy that, go to that layer and delete it. So this part is the part that takes time. The taking the pictures, yeah, like it takes time to take the pictures, but the lining them up, rotating them, transforming them, make sure that they line up nice how you want them. That's the part that takes time. So even if you have not gotten all your pictures, but you have enough to start with, if it's not your turn to go out and take pictures and you still need pictures, but it's not your turn, I would start with this, start uploading your pictures, you know, start opening them, start copying, pasting them, rotating them, making them fit. Now, when you save this each day, because you're going to be working on it for a while, don't save it as a copy and don't save it as a JPEG because a JPEG flattens all your layers. You want to just save it regular because you want to save it as a PSD so that it saves your layer. So you're going to do file save as, not save as a copy, and you're just going to save it as a regular Photoshop file, and you can title it alphabet. That way, when you open it each day, you'll still have your layers so you can move things around and stuff. Okay? Then I'm going to stop this for now.